For the past few months, Jaipur's Gulta gang have managed to keep their lives pretty much in the balance. But as the worldwide economy plummets, one troop of wild living rhesus macaques are about to pay the price for their luxury lifestyle. It's a time where friendships are challenged, lives placed on the line, and family bonds tested to the limit. the Gulta gang sadly lost their former leader and protector, Tarak. Despite the death of her old partner, Rani, the gang's queen, has had plenty to celebrate. Her latest baby, TJ, is now fully weaned and much less of a daily concern. Although with his head for heights, an obsession with man-made cables, there are some days she can't afford to leave him alone for a second. A comforting cuddle is still a daily requirement. Fortunately, Isha, Rani's youngest daughter and heir to the throne, is pretty much independent. Approaching 18 months, she holds her own in the majority of internal squabbles. But her eccentric elder sister, Benita, still hasn't quite grasped the fact that in macaque society, the youngest sibling automatically inherits the highest rank. Isha lays claim to the finest robe. But it's not long until Benita decides as the eldest, she should have it. The little princess reminds her sister who's boss and offers her the chance to make amends by way of grooming. But Benita, being Benita, is having none of it. One macaque who has recently reached the top of his pecking order is Tarak's former deputy, Kamal. He's stepped up as the troop's new alpha male and is proving to be a good partner to Rani and a fairly reliable group leader. Although his mettle has not yet been put to the true test. A test that may not be too far around the corner. Traditionally, Hindus pay their respects to Hanuman, the monkey god, by feeding the monkeys. But the number of pilgrims visiting the temple is at an all-time low. Many of those that do enter the complex come empty-handed. As the economy slides, some temples in the region have seen donations down by as much as 50%. With half as much food to go around, many of the Gulta gang are often left nursing empty stomachs. If the situation doesn't improve soon, something will have to give. But from Queen Rani's point of view, giving is only what others do. Just a mile from the temple in the pink city of Jaipur, the population is fast approaching three and a half million people. Added to the urban crowds are around 4,000 hungry macaque mouths divided into separate gangs, each group defending their territory with a formidable might. Just like the temple monkeys, the urban macaques are also feeling the pinch. Traders tighten security to protect their profits. If stock disappears, so does their livelihood. 
As competition on the streets increases and more and more monkeys go without, ultimately, something has to give. Macaque law states that whenever things go bad, the weak and the vulnerable must bear the brunt. In many cases, the most vulnerable being the youngsters. Rescue workers from Animal Sanctuary help in suffering have never been so busy. Recent months have seen an influx of baby monkeys most likely abandoned by their breastfeeding mothers. But being an abandoned rhesus macaque in Jaipur isn't necessarily such a bad thing. Especially with people like Suresh Valmiki on hand to pick you up and dust you down. Many young animals owe their lives to the charity specialist infant carer, who has a natural affinity with a whole variety of patients. As a Hindu, Suresh feels it isn't just a job nursing the sick and injured, it's also his duty, even if that means having to play the monkey himself. These little ones were found deserted at different locations across the city centre. Without the support and comfort from their original mothers, baby macaques are unlikely to survive. For the time being, Suresh fulfills the parental role and the youngsters show their gratitude by offering an Indian head massage, macaque style. To suggest this was anything else, well, would just be nitpicking. Soon, this newly created mini troop will be big enough and strong enough to fend for itself. But they're not quite home and dry yet. Like any normal business, charities also rely on a strong economy to help bolster their much needed donations. Earlier this year, Help in Suffering lost its main benefactor, meaning funding for animal rescues has been more than halved. If the situation doesn't pick up soon, not only will the charity have to cut back on rescues, it may also have to pass some of its current residents onto local zoos. It's midday at Gulta Temple. Rani, Kamal, and several of the gang are at the lower part of the complex, seizing food as soon as it enters the main gates. As well as a drop in visitors, the gang have witnessed a few other changes in recent weeks. The upper and lower pools of the complex have been drained for cleaning, leaving just the middle bath as the only source of drinking water. In normal circumstances, this wouldn't prove to be too much of a problem for the Gulta gang. But as well as having to share the water with bathing pilgrims, the troop are also forced to compete for it with some unlikely rivals. Vipin attempts to quench his thirst, but someone else decides he's trespassing. Rani moves in, and lets the teenager know he isn't welcome. Bipin backs off, but Rani seems over-determined to demonstrate her authority. Others are quick to support their queen. It's a pattern of aggression that has been emerging for the past few months, whenever certain lower-ranking members of the troop cross paths with the ruling elite. Signs of tension within the troop started to surface ever since food supplies began to run low and the number of mouths needing feeding increased. Bipin, Yash, Tito, and around 40 of their lower ranking associates are now forced to distance themselves from Rani, Kamal, and the dominating half of the troop. The Gulta gang have undergone fission 
a process thought to be caused by the fact that macaques can only cope with remembering a limited number of faces and relationships. Usually, it comes about when troop numbers near 100. But it can also be triggered when food resources become low. And it's this that has torn the Galter gang apart. A splinter group has formed. Rani, Kamal, and the Gulta gang hierarchy assume charge of the lower complex, while Bipin retreats to join the other half of the group gathered by the empty upper pool. The divide seems to have upset many, especially Bipin. Alongside his two partners in crime, Yash and Tito, Two-and-a-half-year-old Bipin had always been a loyal member of the Gulta gang, standing alongside Rani and Kamal whenever the troop faced a challenge. But things are very different now. Together with Yash, Tito, and around 40 other monkeys, Bipin's allegiance has shifted towards a new leading couple. Devdan and his queen, Jaya. It's an allegiance that could be key to the Splinter Group's survival. The Splinter Group's afternoon vigil at the Upper Temple entrance proves completely fruitless. As Rani and her half of the gang continue to capitalize on virtually everything edible entering the lower gates, Bipin decides there's only one thing for it a spot of shopping on Jaipur city streets. Although just a short trek away lies a world bustling with danger. It's also a place littered with life-saving feeding opportunities. But securing a meal in the city is easier said than done, especially with people making sure any pilfering primates get their just desserts. The Splinter Troop need to keep their wits about them. Back at the temple, Rani and Kamal can't help but notice the Splinter Group's departure. More importantly, they recognize that the refilling of the upper pool with fresh spring water has begun. A luxury all temple monkeys have been deprived of for the past two months. Water is one of the most precious commodities here in Rajasthan, India's desert state. Hindus believe that water contains a spiritual power to help purify the body and cleanse the mind of previous sin. Rani and her followers head to the upper entrance. The sight of fresh, clean liquid lifts everyone's spirits. Benita's fascination with her own reflection is proving to be contagious. Reese's macaques still haven't quite fathomed out who these other characters are, unlike chimpanzees who recognize their own reflection instantly. After quenching their thirst, most of the troop take time out to relax. All except Kamal. He's aware of some unwelcome onlookers. Events at the temple haven't gone unnoticed. For the past few weeks, the gang's lanky next-door neighbors, the Langurs, have been glued to their treetop perches. As the daily dramas unfold, their beady eyes clock every macaque move. History has already shown that given half a chance, 
the Langurs would leap at any opportunity to control the temple territory. This time, though, they sense something is very different. The one monkey charged with ensuring the temple remains a Langur-free zone is Kamal. It seems his leadership abilities could be put to the test much sooner than expected. In the heart of the city, the Spinter Group head towards Jaipur's main shopping region. Bipin and the older members of the gang negotiate the man-made obstacles with a seemingly natural ease. But for some of the younger members, it's the first time they've ever left the temple. Getting to grips with a network of artificial vines takes a little getting used to. Dimple, Jaya's three-month-old daughter, struggles to keep up. Despite encouragement from her elders, it's eventually down to Mum to lend a helping hand. Yash soon spots a familiar face. It's the ice cream seller the gang raided last year. Hoping to strike Lucky a second time, the lolly-loving macaque moves in. But this trader is no longer such an easy target. His recent sales are down, and like most other businesses, He's literally battened down the hatches to keep monkey fingers from pilfering his precious stock. Yash is left frustrated and even more desperate for a sugary hit. But Bipin might be onto something bigger and sweeter. LMB is one of the oldest and most popular shops in Jaipur. Since the city was founded, it's been providing one of the most important products cherished by virtually every Indian household. Sweets. Made from simple ingredients such as butter, milk, sugar and nuts, these Indian delights take on a whole host of forms and vibrant colours. Sweets also take on a spiritual significance for many Hindus. Not only are they an important part of many ceremonies and festivities, they're also offered directly to deities, such as Hanuman, the monkey god. But there are no obvious gifts coming Bipin's way. He moves in to take a closer look. The sharing of sweets with neighbors is common practice throughout India. But judging by the security measures, this is one shop unwilling to give away any produce. Not without a struggle, anyway. With the front entrance looking impenetrable, Yash and Tito check out the rear guard. On first appearances, the back of the building looks completely secure. Except, as many of Monkey Thief knows, where there's a grill, there's often a way. Tito tests the screens. They all seem secure, all apart from one. With the coast looking clear, the rest of the splinter group pile in.
staff continue to serve customers at the front of the store, while the group of uninvited quality controllers work overtime in the back room. Dev Dan seems to have found his favorite. He devours the silver-coated pistachio burfies. Whereas Jaya can't get enough of these syrup-based rasgulas. Soon everyone has had a taste. It isn't long before stocks run out at the front of the shop. Bipin and the gang take their cue to leg it out the back. At first sight, the damage seems minimal. But what little stock remains is completely ruined. Back in the street, the splinter group elders polish off the last of their bounty. While the youngsters seem preoccupied with the packaging. Repercussions of a raid like this afternoon's can be high. The troop need to keep a low profile if they're to avoid the city's roaming monkey catcher. So, as the day draws to an end, the Splinter Troop head back to the safety of their temple home. The sugary energy boost gives many of the gang a spring in their tails as they approach the temple gates. But Bippin senses something is wrong. It appears someone has been awaiting their return. Rani and Kamal's troop line the upper entrance wall. Eyes fixed on Devdan, the splinter group's leader. The big male edges closer, but is stopped in his tracks. It seems the Gulta Gang hierarchy have laid claim to the entire temple territory whilst the splinter group were away. Devdon challenges the line. But the opposition is too great. Without his group's full support, he stands no chance of forcing Rani and Kamal's troop back. Most of the splinter group are reluctant to fight. Macaque society is based on a rigid hierarchy, and virtually every member of Rani's troop is feared by Devdon's lower classes. Bipin appears bemused. Just a few months ago, both groups were living as one big happy family. But in this instance, the costs of a battle outweigh the small benefits currently to be gained by the splinter group forcing their way back in. Yash, Tito, and many of the gang also seem a little confused by the move. But to Rani, Kamal, and their 40 strong comrades, the situation is completely clear. The temple territory is now theirs and theirs only. Next time on Monkey Thieves. As Bippin and the exiled Splinter Troop struggle to come to terms with a new life on the streets, a high-flying carnival arrives in town, lifting everyone's spirits. But although the city's monkey catcher is tied up with other matters, the Splinter Troop come face to face with an even bigger threat.